We ready? Okay. Cool. So, thank you so much for coming, and I'm gonna switch off the sexy Gandalf for a minute there. Um, I think you guys heard enough of that. So thank you so much for coming. Um, I'm really glad that you all came. I know it's Sunday and it's like a sunny day outside and everyone would just love to have a drink outside and a beer. But you know, I'm sure we can all make this happen really, really fast so we can go back to our business of drinking in the sun. So my name is Zug Guerre and I'm a director and visual effects supervisor working at Fired Out Smoke. And today I bring you quite a few projects. I thought that, you know, instead of just showing you one project, I'm going to show you three projects. Uh, you get like three for the price of one today. So I'm going to talk about Homefront last, and I'm going to talk about the crew, and I'm going to talk about Eve Valkyrie. But before I do that, as custom, as tradition, I always take a 360 photo with my crowd. Would you guys be so kind to do that with me? Okay, excellent. So these are the last three I made. So this is from Warsaw, this is in Sweden, and this is in London. So today we're going to do one in, in South Africa. <laughs> Let's do this then. So do you guys all want to like look at the camera here? If you are in there, you can look at this side or that side and just smile and, you know, just be happy <laughs> that you're here, you know. Okay, you guys ready? Yay! Thank you so much. So now you're going to be on my next presentation. <laughs> Great. So before I go ahead and talk about the actual projects, I'm going to shamelessly promote myself just for a minute. Just for a minute. I'll try to be as quick as I can. So, you know, yeah. I am not sponsored by Pizza Hut, though. But So I'm going to start by promoting myself just a little bit. So my name is Zugek. If you want to see my work, you can go to... Come on. Oh, you see, it, this is the thing. It's like the DVDs, you can't skip them, you see. You have to see all the promotion. So my name is Zuger, and um, you can go to my website. It's hugoefengerre.com. I couldn't get hugoefengerre.com. That is actually a hairdress salon guy. In, <laughs> and um, <laughs> I'm not joking. It's a guy in Chile that has a hairdress salon, and he's called Zuger, and he has hugoefengerre.com. I actually follow him on Twitter and everything, you know. We <laughs> communicate sometimes. But yeah, you can go and see my, my website, ugoeifengerre.com, or you can just type it in Google, you'll find it in the first page. You can see some of the work that I've done. Just so you guys have an idea where I've been, um, I've been working for 19 years in the industry, and I'm Portuguese, I was born in Portugal, and I currently work in London. My, I've been working in a lot of companies, but you know, these are the major companies that I've been working in the past. I started in London my career at the BBC. I was a visual effects supervisor in a couple of children's uh, TV shows. Then I became a regular composter at Nexus Productions uh, for several years. And then I ended up being at the mill for quite a while. I started as a freelancer, and then I stayed at the mill in London for five years as the head of the Nuke department. So I had a team of about 30 people, and we grew a commercials Nuke department. You guys know what Nuke is, right? It's a composting package, right? So uh, I was there. Of course, now I actually left the mill. So I left the mill about two years ago. And uh, ever since, I've been an independent director. So I'm directing and supervising projects. But I am working uh, at Fire Without Smoke as a director and as a VS supervisor. At the same time, I have a double life. I also have a double life as a teacher. So for nine years, I've been a teacher, and I teach at Campus I-12, which is a school in Sweden that teaches visual effects. I teach at Scape Studios, which is in London. I've done many courses at FX PhD, both Nuke and Nuke Studio. I also teach, uh, and I'm, I'm part of the board at the National Film Television School in London, and the lovely people at the Foundry, which invited me to come here today. I've been working a lot with them, doing tutorials, doing talks like this talk that we are right now watching. But enough about that, let's just look at my work. I never really like to do showreels because, you know, I don't really know what to put on the showreel. So instead of actually making a nice showreel, I decided to put all the work I've done in the last 10 years and just put it really going fast, <laughs> and then you can just watch it like that. So here's my showreel.
Okay. So, so I've I've done pretty much everything. I've worked in commercials and music videos and short films and films and game cinematics. I've tried to be as broad as possible. I like to have new challenges all the time. So uh, that actually comes back to my presentation. I have always been a gamer since I'm like four years old, and so I always wanted to work in games. But you know, I can't really program. I really don't know how to program. I'm really bad at it. I'm much more an artistic background, since my background is fine arts. That's where I did my degree. And so I thought, okay, how can I actually work, go to games? And so when I was, while I was at the mill, I, of course, every time a game came into the building, I would just put my teeth on it. And so I started at the mill working on trailers for Gran Turismo, trailers for Body Count, I supervised Rainbow Six and Call of Duty Ghosts. And so that is how I actually started on this journey to become a cinematic director in the games industry. And now currently, you know, I've worked on Just Cause 3 and Until Dawn and Watch Dogs 2, Homefront, The Division, The Crew, The Valkyrie, and I'm currently working in three games that I can't tell you which ones they are because otherwise I would have to kill you all in this room. But you'll see it soon enough. Also, I'm going to give a shout out to Fire.Smoke. You should check their website. It's just fire.smoke.com. It's a new agency in London that specifically is tailored for the game video industry marketing. So we do everything from covers of games, we do websites, we do trailers, cinematics, we even help on the stories of the games, on the lore of the games. And we've worked with all these franchises. But this ends my shameless promotion, and I'm now going to go back to my keynote. So I'm going to start talking about Eve Valkyrie, which was a project that I recently finished. This was finished in December, and this was finished for the launch of the Eve Valkyrie for the HTC Vive. Just to give you a bit of the technical mumbo jumbo, these are the things that we used to make the, the, the actual trailer. So this was a launch trailer, a 30 second commercial, and we used Cinema 4D for all the rendering and modeling. We used Arnold as our rendering engine. We used Nuke for all the compositing, Nuke Studio for all the editorial from start to finish. And then this I'm gonna touch upon later, but Dropbox Business F-Track in Skype. For those of you that don't know what F-Track is, it's very similar to Shotgun. It's a managing tool for productions. And then Skype, because you always have to talk with people. The reason I'm mentioning this is because ever since I left the mill, you know, I've, I've been working on my office on a desk for almost 15 years. And I figured there must be a better way of doing these things. There must be a better way that doesn't involve me having to get one hour train or one hour uh, tube to get to my work. And so I'm, I'm experimenting with trying to work with people all over the world. So all these three projects that you're watching today, they were all done remotely, every single one of them. They were done with people that I know from the mill, that I know from Framestore, that I know from MPC, and together with the artists of Fire.Smoke, we developed a really robust pipeline to work remotely using several servers on all these locations. I'll get back into that in a minute. First, let's watch the trailer. You should also, the trailer, we were very happy to get Ruther Hauger as the voiceover artist on the, on the trailer. If you guys don't know, he's the bad guy in Blade Runner. He has a really nice voice. So let's watch, let's watch the trailer. There is no greater contest, no more dangerous a game than the fight in the sky. And it's just a few in those cold machines who know that life and death are separated by split seconds. And it all started kind of in Cinema 4D, where we kind of 
for the first time, we used Arnold in Cinema 4D. The reason we used Cinema 4D was because Five Dot Smoke has a very good pipeline with After Effects and Cinema 4D. Uh, and I have a big pipeline in Nuke, so we kind of tried to merge the two together. Uh, so this was kind of like... Uh, also, another thing is that we tend to work a lot with the game studios, and they provide us the assets for uh, the actual rendering. Not to, not to say that we just use their assets as they are. We have to reshade them, we have to repolitize them, like we have to kind of adapt them to our pipeline. But it's a really good start to have the assets from the game. This also means that we can be very faithful to the game, because we're literally using the same stuff they have. This is like a, just a little video. Instead of opening Nuke here in the show, I think it would be too boring. Just have a little video to show you kind of the setup. This is one shot, of course, but First thing we did was we separated all the different types of lighting and passes inside of Nuke, so we have as much control as possible, because we had very little time to do this project. We also used the 3D system to do projections and reflections. Again, because we only had a month to do this project, we really wanted to do the actual lighting reflections on the visor by hand in Nuke. The reason for that is because we kind of wanted to keep changing them as the gameplay progressed. We then, you know, used a lot of stock footage and a lot of volumetrics and a lot of mixing of different pieces of stock footage, missing, uh, mixing different pieces of actual uh, renders from particle systems in Nuke to actually produce all these effects that you see on the background and on the foreground. And then, of course, a lot of sprinkle of love, you know, with a lot of color correction, a lot of glow, a lot of magic. Basically, at this stage, I'm literally making love to the comp, trying to get it to work as best as I can. We also decided to do depth of field in motion blur and compositing because, again, we only had a month. We couldn't really render the motion blur and, and, motion and depth of field in the actual 3D render. I wish I could, but we couldn't. Also, one little mention is we use the actual luminance of the footage and the images to actually bounce the lights and the lightnings that you see on the video. That also really helped to try to integrate these shots, especially to do these rim lights. Again, it would have taken too long to do in 3D, so we kind of used our trusty old nuke to do these kind of things. And then a lot of flares, a lot of dirt on the lens, you know, it's always good to have flares. Again, I must emphasize, we never really were after doing a photoreal composite. The idea was always to do a very stylized uh, uh, piece of trailer, so that was never the intention. And then, of course, the finishing with some kind of vignette a lot of color correction, a lot of love into it, a lot of sharpening as well. I always like to use a, a cheeky sharpen, and then a lot of chromatic aberration, and a lot of grain, and that's it, and that, that, that's finished. So this wouldn't have been a keynote without a breakdown, so here's the breakdown of how we did all the shots. That was just one of the shots. We did eight shots, and they're all done the same way. So that was a really proud moment. I really enjoyed doing that trailer, and especially because we had Ruther Auger, and it was really a badass trailer, and it was really a short amount of time. I like working on short amount of time things that I can just focus and then leave them behind. So let's talk about something else now. So I'm gonna just really quickly shamelessly promote something else. It's not played, by the way. It's funny how in the 90s, we always had phones on films, always from Nokia. 
The reason I'm doing a promotion here is because I just wanted to mention that a lot of people really don't understand the power of stock footage. And the reason I'm saying this is because there is now, you know, back in the day, it used to be that stock footage was quite bad. You know, you, you get this quick time, really low quality, really shitty, really, you can't really use it. But these days, I would really recommend two websites that you guys should check out. This website is called Action VFX, and they actually provide full dynamic range stock footage. It's actually uh, red files that you get when you buy them. It's not some shitty QuickTime. And the second company is called Effects Elements, and they actually sell you a hard drive filled with elements. I just want to mention this. They don't pay me. I don't even have any connection with them. But I wouldn't be what I am today without these two guys. They are really amazing. They have very high-quality stock footage that really is amazing to add that extra believability to your CG. Because you can put all the CG and then add a few real elements. It really brings it to life. That would be my advice to you. And this time I'm going to talk about another project. So now I'm going to talk about The Crew. Now The Crew was a slightly different project. This was a project for Ubisoft. We work a lot with The Crew. We did all the trailers for them and all the gameplay trailers and a lot of work for Ubisoft. But specifically the one I'm bringing in today is for a piece of DLC called uh, Calling All Units. Now, this project was a bit different pipeline. We used uh, Softimage. This was the last project we used Softimage with. We used Nuke for Lock Compositing. And then we used something called Redshift. You guys know what Redshift is? It's a real time, it's a it GPU you accelerated rendering engine. I'll talk about that in a minute. And then, of course, Dropbox, Skype, and F-Track, which I'll talk at the end of the presentation. Again, this was a project mostly done between the offices of Fire Dot Smoke in London and a lot of remote artists around the world. And then Nuke Studio as an editorial tool from start to finish, since animatic until the end. Let's watch the trailer first, so I can talk about it a little bit. Hello, Alex. My name is Zoe. I think we can help each other. Sometimes you end up on the wrong side of the law, even when you're in the right. I'm FBI, deep undercover in the street racing scene. My handlers are corrupt. You even got the scars to prove it. And as a new threat rises, I've got to step up my game and bring in an elite police driver. Together, we'll tear this organization apart and take back the USA. From coast to coast, with every tool at our disposal. was a really tricky trailer because of all the footage and gameplay that we had to project to the surfaces and actually construct a, a, a story and actually, actually a, a voiceover throughout the whole car. Here's a little representation of how we kind of pull it off in composite. Again, I always have a very strong compositing background because that's my, my background and I kind of always want to fix things in post in the comp area because we don't have a lot of time. Again, this project was a month only. So, and it was only five of us doing the project, so we had to be really quickly. So again, the same thing, this time Redshift, we separated all the shaders we, with the reflections, the speculars, the diffuse, the normal passes, position pass, all rendered as an EXR, we reconstructed the shaders, and then relighted and actually tweaked the lighting as if we were 3D artists. So if we had to like, change the lighting, we would go to the light pass. If we had to change the glow, we would go to the light pass. If we had to change the overall color of the car, we would go to the diffuse pass. So you kind of have to have a mindset as a composer, as a lighting artist. That's how you need to do it. Then a lot of depth of field using actual real life uh, iris uh, masks. Uh, then we had, of course, a lot of glow, a lot of love, a lot of ugh, so many things that we have there. Uh, motion blur, a lot of light wrapping to kind of blend in the image. And especially the lights of the police car, which we use to drive the lighting changes that the whole car has for the actual uh, police sirens. A lot of flares again, I love flares. Flares always makes everything better. You always should think about that. So, it, you know, you look at the shot, it looks okay. You put a flare, wow, it looks amazing now. That's how you need to do it. So, let's move on. Again, this wouldn't be a keynote without a breakdown. Here's a breakdown. The same way as Eve, every shot was done the same way, with the same passes, the same layers, the same flares, same techniques. So I showed you a breakdown of one shot, but here's how the rest of the thing was done.
So I just want to mention really quickly, uh, tips and tricks, not self-promotion. Um, I grade and color correct all my own projects now these days because I'm directing them. So I just wanted to give you a little tip of a thing called Scopebox. Scopebox is a full suite of vector scope and really nice, good tools for color correction that you can use on any HDMI or SDI out. The other thing as well, have a look at Redshift. Redshift is, like I said, a rendering engine, a bit like Arnold. It's a, 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 a GI-based render engine, and, but it uses GPU. Uh, we used it a lot, and as you can see here, that's Homefront, which is the next project I'm going to talk about, which is on their homepage. And the cool thing with this is that it uses your Titan or a 1080 or whatever graphic card from NVIDIA you have on your computer. So it's really a perfect combination because you have a really awesome card, so you can play really good games, but you can also render, which is great. It's like a great combination. But you know what's better than having one Titan to render? Is having eight Titans to render in one machine. So that's even better. So think about that. And the cool thing with Redshift, it's all, it's all kind of, it all doubles up because it doesn't use the CPU. So literally, if you're rendering frames at one minute per frame, if you have eight, you need to divide the one minute by eight. And that's real, like that's how it works. So I'm gonna go back to the keynote now. And last but not least, I'm sorry that I'm bothering you so much with this. I'm gonna talk about Homefront the Revolution, which is a project that I co-directed with Firedot Smoke uh, with uh, Will O'Connor, which was the other director of this project. Now Homefront, I'm gonna first show you the trailer and then we can talk about it. It started back with the Apex Corporation in the 70s and the birth of Silicon River in North Korea. Even back then, their tech was way ahead of what was coming out of America. We bought everything they could sell, from phones to tablets to just about anything. And when they started making weapons, well, we couldn't resist. Our wars in the Middle East had been getting worse and worse one leading straight to the next. Even after that terrible day in Riyadh, we kept fighting as our country fell apart. And still, we bought Apex to give us an edge. As the dollar tanked, our debt to North Korea spiraled. Unemployment rocketed and the country was on its knees. The failing government defaulted on the debt and the North Koreans made their decision. Every piece of technology they'd sold us had a back door. They turned off our military with a single button press. The first KPA troops on US soil were said to be there to rebuild. But after the early aid packages, there was only brutality. They stole our liberty and our freedom. America is under control of the KPA. But she will rise again. You are the revolution. So uh, this was a project, this what you saw is the in-gaming, the in-game intro. When you first launch the game, this is what you get. You get an introduction to the lore and the story of the game. Uh, we worked uh, with Dan Busters and with Deep Silver for almost a year on everything from posters to websites to marketing campaigns to trailers to gameplay trailers and the in-game cinematic that I just showed you. We did a bunch of productions for them. We even worked on the lore of the game as well uh, that you just saw that we actually, it's like a fictional representation where the world, the United States, is actually not a superpower, but North Korea is a superpower. And instead of having Apple in San Francisco, you have Apple in North Korea, which is called Apex. So we had to do all sorts of things. We had to do fake commercials for Apex, for this phone company. We had to do tablets for them, logos. We even did really old school TV commercials to put on the website uh, for all of that, you know. The Apex 2. Um, <laughs> and we even did this one. So 
we created an entire lore and, and image. We even did a website with a completely fake timeline of the world of other things that happened. So we had a really complex lore on all of this, but I just wanted to introduce you to this project. Uh, I'm only going to talk about the cinematic that you just saw, but these are all the other things we did as well. Now, this entire project was done using Maya. We had to leave, we had to leave XSI for Maya. We weren't happy about that because no one likes Maya, but we have to use it. But there you go. And then we used Photoshop for all the matte paintings. We used Houdini for all the particles of the bomb, of the explosion. Redshift for rendering. Dropbox Business, F-Track, and Skype for talking. We had a team at Fire.Smoke, and then we had a team all over the world. We had our rendering uh, artists were in Germany. The compositing team was one compositor in Sweden, one compositor in London, one compositor in France. And then we had uh, the rest in London in Fire.Smoke. Of course, Nuke Studio was used for all the editorial, from the animatic stage to the storyboard until the very end when we delivered, including the grading as well, which I used Nuke Studio for. Let's talk about how this all kind of came to, together. I'm going to really be short because I had to kind of, of course, because we had, don't have a lot of time, so I tried to make this, this as less slides as possible. References, of course, the first garage shot was, of course, Steve Jobs' garage, which we kind of studied and tried to do as faithful matte painting as possible, and we bought a bunch of props and tried to get props from the 70s and tried to mix CG with real life, real life action and kind of get people that would look like a North Korean Steve Jobs. Uh, we also had, of course, a lot of uh, reviews. I'm, I'm a big fan um, of Jarhead, so I use it as a reference for lighting. Uh, I love Roger Deakins' work, and so I kind of use it as a base for most of the grading and the lighting of the shots. Then, of course, there's the actual keynote presentation, which is kind of like a mix. Imagine if Steve Jobs' keynote would, would have sex with Iron Man's presentation. <laughs> That would be what we did. It's like, it's slick, like Apple, but also a bit over the top with the confetti. What's wrong with the confetti? We don't know. So that's kind of what we were aiming for. Iron Man crossover with Steve Jobs, uh, rest his soul. So, and then of course, next was the nuclear explosion. Here's the funny thing. We study all these nuclear explosions and thought, oh, this is cool, but it's so slow. Look at that. It takes like forever for it to happen. Look at that. So it's like, is this going to go anywhere? So we thought, this not, might, can't be true. It is. Actually, it takes that long. So we looked at this film, which is Wolverine, which has the most unrealistic explosion in the world. That's what we used as a reference. <laughs> because it looks deadly. It looks like you're all going to die. And they're all, they're all dead. Like, all of them are dead on that project. And again, Jarhead and the work of Roger Deakins on the actual grittiness in look of the entire trailer for the contrast and for the kind of tonalities of pastel and all those things. And of course, the game itself. The game is set in Philadelphia. It has a very specific palette. And of course, we had to be faithful to that as well by using all the silvers and blues that the actual game art has. As you can see that we've introduced it to the last shot. And by the way, all of these assets are from the game. So this is an actual street from the game that you can play. You can go there and play. We just used it uh, for our trailer, again, to be as, as faithful as possible. Now, one little mention about it being in live action. I know we all love CG trailers, but we thought that we wanted to do something different. We wanted to use live action instead of CG, just to make it more stylized and more realistic. So I went to Gamescon two years ago. This is me, by the way having some fun with the people on the truck there. And we saw that they had all these suits and they had all these walls and Jeeps and they have made this entire uh, uh, boot of home front. And we kind of asked them, what are you going to do with all this stuff? So then they gave us all, they gave us like a big, big package with all the guns, all the suits and everything. And we used it on the actual trailer. So we were as faithful to the game as we could because the marketing department created all of this. So of course it's already approved. You don't have to go and approve it again. It's all done. So it's great. So that also was the tipping point for us to do it live action as well. And there was, there's like another reason for it to be live action. You're going to see in a minute why. It's really cool. So we went into the normal process. We went to storyboarding, and we did the whole thing in storyboarding. This is a very organized project. I need to show you this. This is a, a deleted scene. So there was a shot where the present United States were going to be hit by an helicopter, and he was going to die. Unfortunately, we didn't make it. At the time, it was too expensive for us to actually do this in CG. It became a bit of a problem, and then we kind of threw away. So the only thing left is this image here. It's so funny because these days, probably I would have got this approved faster. 
if I would have put someone with blonde hair in the hot White House. So anyway, and this is the other shot that we couldn't do. This is the parliament in, no, sorry, the, not the parliament. In the United States, it's called, uh, not parliament, it's called something else, I think. Congress, yeah. So this is a Congress of the United States. So this is a matte painting. The idea was that we we're going to do the fight with like 200 congressmen. They were just fighting. And these are all photos from the Italian Congress. You know, these are all photos that we used. And if we would have shot this, I wanted to be that guy. I wanted to be the guy like falling, ah, just like falling down. Unfortunately, in terms of motion control and footage and CG, this single shot would, would have cost probably as much as the entire production because it's so complex. So again, we didn't do it. But the matte painting lives. So if you look at the, because this is a 4K project, if you look at, no, sorry, 2.5K project, if you look at YouTube and you see it in 2.5K, you see that the matte painting is one, on one of the screens on the New York shot. It's like a TV show and says, chaos in parliament. And then you just see all this happening. So at least we used it. But it's really unfortunate. It's a really nice matte painting done by David Gibbons, our amazing matte painter. And as you can see, that's me there falling down. Um, and then we went to pre-production. Here's where it really becomes interesting, and that's why we chose to do live action. So have you guys ever heard of a place called Stiller Studios? So Stiller Studios is a studio in Sweden, in Stockholm, and it's by far the most advanced uh, studio I've ever worked in my life. It's a full motion control studio, one-to-one -one studio, where literally you can film anything that is produced on a computer. It's like a wet dream for a visual effects artist. And so I was really happy to go there. They have rigs that are actually driven by rigs in Maya. They have, the entire thing is like measured, so you get a full Maya scene with you. So we got a plugin from them. This is their plugin. And so you get the entire set from them in Maya, and then you place it in your scene, and then you animate the camera rig from their rig. So that means their camera rig is already constrained by the limitations of their camera. Which means, for example, if you go too fast, it gives you a warning saying, you're going too fast, the camera's going to kill someone. Or it says, you're going, you can still go faster if you want. So this is how we animated the entire project. So this was months before we even went to shoot. We already had everything organized in Maya. We even knew where the actual extras needed to be. And we could mark on the floor where they have to be. You're going to see later that they have a projection system on the roof that projects a top view of Maya in the floor. So you know where to put the people and you know how to put the tanks and everything. It's amazing. It's like, it's like, it's like a kid's dream. Like I, I couldn't believe my eyes. So this is a really good place. So once we get into production, we already had the whole thing done. So this is an animatic before we shot. As you can see, it looks exactly like the thing that we finished. It does because we, well, not exactly. They look a bit better on the final result. But this was clearly the way to go because we could literally know where to put people, how many people we needed, how high they should be, all those things. With this in mind, let me show you a little, small little clip of how the shooting went with a little nice jazz music with it. Sometimes. So if you guys want to check it out, you should. It's a really nice company. And for you guys to know, we shot the whole thing in one day. Again, like I refer, we used all the game assets as we could because, but also I wanted to be faithful with the game. So I got a bunch of assets from the, the actual game. I got a bunch of models from the game, from helicopters to tanks 
to drones that were actually in the game, even burned cars, all sorts of things we could use. Of course, they had to all be redo, redone a bit because they were shaded by the, by the game's engine. This is F-Track, which is very similar to Shotgun. We use it completely together with Nuke Studio, so we, we have a bridge from Nuke Studio to F-Track. So we have all the comments, all the, the actual reviews, all the client stuff is here. And then when Nuke Studio handled all the 5K footage shot on the RED camera. This was RED Dragon, uh, for, and then we synchronized it in Nuke Studio, exported it, because we had multiple plates, because we only had 12 people on set. And as you can see on the keynote, it looks like we have 100 people. No, we only have 12. We just like mixed their, their, their hairs, and we put jackets on other people, and then we just merged people around. I show up three times, by the way. So we just used different hats and different things. We had like a bunch of props. And so Nuke Studio was really fundamental to try to synchronize all of this, and it was really the only way to handle this, because no other editorial package would handle 6K footage like playing back like this. So it was a really complex job that I did. It haunted, haunted me for several weeks, this thing. And then, of course, Nuke. One thing you should know is Stellar Studios gives you a script. So this is a script given by the studio. So the, ca the, the motion control spits out a, a Nuke Studio a a scene and a Nuke scene and a Maya scene. It even has the notes that I talked on set. So if I like a, uh, if I like a shot, it shows up on the notes. And now, so this is all the automated th thing. It does a pre-key, it shows you the camera, shows you the geometry, and so you get a nuke script in a Maya scene every time you shoot something. And that's for every take. So you get one for every take. And that was really easy. And, and of course, a lens distortion node as well for us to undistort and redistort. And here's the comments, you see. I was rating the shots, rating three, rating five, rating four. So whenever I said, I love that shot, they would write rating five. And that trickled down to Nuke and then trickled down to F-Track as well. So the whole team knew what was going on. And then, of course, as I am, I love 2D and I love compositing. I used a lot of elements. I used photos. I used matte paintings, projections in Nuke to try to build up this garage. I did the same as well on the last shot using a lot of fire elements from stock footage. A lot of, uh, uh, like you should know that this last shot was all the particles, all the debris, all the hash, all the smoke, all the fire is all live action. And because it was a single shot with no rotation, it was quite easy for us to, to kind of pull it off. And one last mention is this guy. You see this guy? So on the, last, on the last two weeks of the production, the client said, can we replace him? And so we did. So on the two last weeks, I called Stiller and we got another actor. This is actually the visual effects director of Stiller Studios. And we shot it again. And just so you know, because this is motion control, it took me an hour to shoot this over Skype. So I was on Skype calling Sweden. There I am in London on my studio. This is a, a browser that Stiller Studio has where I can watch everything live. And so I can choose the cameras and I can see everything goes, they have about 20 cameras on the set. I can just flip from them and watch everything and watch everything live. And then, you know, just view two, view B, view A. And I'm talking with the DOP and also the CEO of uh, Will O'Connor, CEO of the Fire Dot Smoke. And this was the new shot that we shot. So it took us an hour. They did this on lunchtime between two sets that they had to do. And then they gave us the plate, and this was two weeks before deadline. We keyed it, we put it on our system, and that's done. And now breakdowns. Hey, exciting. We had to have breakdowns. I'll try to be fast, because I know I have to get going. So am I going in time? Okay, Le then I'm going to say this. You guys can watch all of this in my website or in Fire Spoke, okay? So these are breakdowns of every single shot. It's all online. You can go and watch it. There's no point of me showing you it here, because I want to have some questions, I prefer that. Let's just go a bit further here, and I'm just gonna move all these slides forward, all these breakdowns, you can watch them later on my website. Um, and I'm gonna just finish off with, please go to Stiller Studios, check their website. They are doing remarkable work in terms of CG, really high-end footage and filming. You can even actually film something somewhere, track it, and then the camera over there can repeat the move. Even that is also possible. Look at Fire.Smoke, of course, please. Look at my stuff. Follow me on Twitter. You go see Gera. You go see Gera. You can follow me on Twitter. I'm trying to reach 4,000. Help me with that. It's the year of the 4,000. Let's go for this. And then you can follow my Yugo's Desk website, my YouTube channel called Yugo's Desk. Every week I put a new free visual effects tutorial. At the moment, I'm disconstructing the garage shot. You can also see my review of Resident Evil. It's really good. 
as well. You should look at that. And that's it. So now let's go to the Q&A. Q&A is brought to you by American Ninja, one of the best films of the 90s. Yes. So let's, uh, while we do the keynote, I'll leave the trailer going in the background. So is there any questions? I'm definitely going to go for that, yes. My Redshift pipeline is just like a, a little diversion right now. I'm really studying really deeply real-time engines. So last year, I I'm doing a trailer. I did a trailer at Ubisoft in Paris, and we used the actual game's engine to render all the trailer. We're not using Redshift. We're actually using the actual engine. And the, that engine can output all the passes, all the depths, all the positions, everything in real time. The funny thing is that if you render it in 4K, I was having a discussion with a rendering artist, and he was telling me, oh, you want it in 4K with all the passes in EXR? Yes, I do. I'm really sorry, but I can't do it in real time. Say, so, okay, so how long it's going to take? It's going to be 10 frames per second. I'm really sorry, I can't do it faster. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, it's fine, man. It's fine, don't worry, relax. It's just fine. So that means the entire trail will be done in two minutes. That's fine, not a problem. So yeah, I'm definitely looking to that, yes. Because I, I hate waiting for rendering. I hate it. Yeah, exactly, exactly. No, I'm a really big fan, especially, I mean, I'm not saying film can be done like that, but because I think film requires much higher quality. But I think for the work I do, trailers, productions, smaller productions, TV spots, cinematics, I think it's, the quality is more than enough to do what we do, especially because we have such a complex compositing pipeline, you know, so we can really push the renders, you know. So, yeah. You had a question as well? An editor, what you mean? I edit it myself, yeah, I do, yeah. I was an editor years ago, back in the 1900s now. I, I was an editor back in Portugal in Sweden. I've lived in Sweden for many years, and I was a Final Cut editor for many years. So, but I, I now, these days, I don't use Final Cut anymore. Now I just use Nuke Studio because it's easier to integrate with my pipeline, yeah. So, yeah. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> you guys are making me blush. Thank you. I come here to South Africa. I'm getting all this love. That's, that's nice. Any other questions? No more questions? Yep. <laughs> if I can... <laughs> no, I don't think I will be invited by North Korea to present anytime soon. I don't think so, no. I'm sure my name is on some list somewhere. <laughs> Because of this, yes, the entire fire without smoke is probably like red flagged. You can't even log into the website. You're gonna ask me to leave, that's fine. So I hope you guys uh, watch an American Ninja. It's an amazing film, you should all watch it. I'm here all day. You'll find me probably near the bar. I'll be there. So thank you so much. American Ninja!